Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. I'm Gov Blacksburg, aka Wolf Financial. I'm here with Evan from Stock Market News. There are 10 myths that are really popular, pervasive within the investing world. We're going to roll through into the first one of these that debt is bad, but not all debt is bad, only dumb debt is. I have literally never paid any interest on a single credit card. And I've had credit cards for like a decade at this point, but that's just because I have them set to auto pay. I pay off the balance and instead I'm actually making money off my credit cards. Don't go and just finance a car when it costs your whole salary, right? And of course, interest rates and stuff like that. There's just a lot of stuff with dumb debt that stands out, but smart debt like real estate and a number of other pieces can really add to everything that you are doing. Stock market news. I maybe was going to avoid a little bit, but avoiding credit cards. When used correctly, credit cards are pretty good. You see all the examples here. One thing that's not on here as well is building up your credit score. Credit cards are not the problem. It's the discipline. Yeah, it blows my mind how many people are so scared of their own self-control that they refuse to get a credit card because they think that that's somehow going to be what launches them into debt. A credit card is just a debit card with benefits if you have an ounce of self-control. Plus, you need to start building credit early. The first thing you should do when you open a credit card is you should go in and set up auto payments, link it to a bank account, auto pay at least the minimum balance each month. Now, you're not going to run into these crazy interest problems as long as you can control your spending and understand if you use them wisely, you can get benefits. For me, I use the Amex Platinum credit card gets me a bunch of benefits. I travel a ton. Included in my Amex credit card was clear subscription. So now I can get through airports faster. It gives me $10 towards Uber every single month. It also gives me access to airport lounges. There's a bunch of perks, not to mention, of course, I get cash back. There's a lot of perks to having a credit card. You don't need to avoid them. You just need to have the right ones and a little bit of self-control. Let's walk into number three. You can start later. Here's a little bit of just sample about how much you need to become a millionaire over time and it really escalates. But at this point, I just need to put in $505 a month. In my opinion, pretty doable for a lot of people, especially if you don't have massive expenses, overwhelming debt. And nowadays, it's not enough to just be a millionaire. You would need like 3 million in order to have a comfortable, you know, pot or more than that, right? As inflation keeps going up. So stop starting later, cut that out. You need to start now. And this is the myth that you need a high income. People nowadays don't understand how this is possible, right? They look at it and say, if you can successfully save 20% plus of what you're bringing in and invest it on a regular basis, stock markets never lost money over a 20 year period. Stocks like Tesla have been life changing for people, right? If you can catch the right opportunities, even if it's just spy QQQ, a semiconductor ETF, they were game changing over time. It's not gonna happen a day, a year or five years. These things definitely take time. You got any comments on all this, Evan? I definitely agree with both of the last points. The earlier you start, the better, the more the money is going to compound and everyone should be investing. There, there's so much here. A lot of people try and avoid it. I don't have enough money. Well, fractional shares are a thing you can literally buy in $50 increments of the S&P 500. So I definitely do agree with both of these points. I think they're great. Uh, number five is you can save your way to wealth. I don't understand this one. People have tons of money sitting in a bank account. What is that going to do for you exactly? Nothing. I have a bank account. They pay me one cent an interest every single month doesn't really make a dent. However, nowadays, there's a lot of ways that you can invest. If you don't want to go and take the risk of the markets, money market funds right now are a huge opportunity. I'm earning 4.25%, right? That's a lot better than 0.07 or whatever these bank accounts are giving. So find opportunities. You can also get T-bills and I-bonds. There's a whole class of non-volatile investments that can really help you. But of course, at the end of the day, I'm of the opinion that everyone should be continuously DCAing at a minimum into the stock market. I DCA every single month. It happens automatically. So it doesn't matter if it's a good month, bad month, flat month. I don't even look at it. I go and check on the 15th and the money's out of my account. Gets DCA'd across the next 30 days. I go check the next 15th. Money's out of my account. That's a system it's just continuously happening. And it's something I'm a big fan of. If you're just always waiting, you're just never going to get in. And at the worst case, again, use those money market funds. I didn't want to put all my money into the stock market right now because it's uncertain. So even though I'm continuously DCAing, I also went and I put a bunch of money into a money market fund. Now it's earning me, even if it's, you know, an extra thousand dollars every few months, every little bit is going to help and continue to compound and add up. Number six on here is this concept that money changes you. I read a great book years ago that really hammered home this concept. The whole book was about it. At the end of the day, money amplifies who you are, what you do. If you beforehand were a terrible person and uh, you got a bunch of money, 
probably not going to make you a good person. If you were a good person who wanted to do stuff for other people, you got a bunch of money, now you're probably going to go ahead and do that. And I think people just have to understand this because what ties into this is this concept of money is evil. It's not. You should not feel bad for going out and making a bunch of money for building wealth. If you're a good person, I believe that you should go out and build that wealth and use it for good. You got any comments on these last couple, Evan? Yeah, I definitely do agree with a lot of them. I think they're pretty interesting. The next one I think is pretty good too, that investing yeah. is risky. It is definitely true that investing is risky, but pretty much everything is. And there's no risk without reward and you can level it. You don't have to go all into like options and crazy stuff like that. But taking a little bit of risk to get a little bit of reward is a very important thing. And I think the comments at the end, the truth is not investing is riskier. I think it's riskier to sit on the sidelines for 30, 40, 50 years and watch the market go ahead and keep your cash in your couch or under your cushion or under your bed or whatever, just sitting there or in the bank getting 0.25%. So doesn't mean go all in on risk. Yeah, even if inflation was at an ideal level, which is 2%, over 10 years, you would lose 20% of your money. So, and that's in an ideal level. And right now inflation is what, 5% at the moment? Is it is it under that yet, Evan? Ooh, I think we are at just that 5% was the last. Yeah, so at 5%, think about that. Over five years, you lose 25% of your money's value. So that's a pretty risky uh, move, if you ask me. So I definitely agree with you on that point. Number eight, you must own your home. A lot of people, when I posted this, kind of came back at me in the comments and were like, if you pay rent, you're paying all these things together. Uh, not quite. I understand that the costs are kind of assimilated and built into there, but homeownership is expensive. Right now, I do not own a home currently. I'm traveling all the time. It makes no sense for me to own a home. I rent here and there. For me, that just makes a lot more sense with all these things. I don't have to worry about property taxes. I don't have to worry about people think like even once you own the home, right? Like even if your mortgage is paid off, that's the end of it. It's not true. There's still continued expenses. Those on a yearly basis, you have to deal with insurance, your utilities, renovations, right? And maintenance. I mean, it's like expensive to be a homeowner. Things break all the time. It's, it's what any homeowner will tell you, right? It's expensive to be a homeowner. So I understand that it can be expensive to rent. However, I think you get a little bit more flexibility with renting. You don't have to rent the uh, nicest place in the nicest location. Um, you can take a little bit of a haircut there because guess what? You're not going to be there forever. You know, it's not a home that you own, right? When you own that home, I think that's something you want to have special. But I think renting gives a lot of flexibility to the mix, in my opinion. And number nine, myth investing is for rich people this has thankfully been heavily debunked over the last five to ten years but for a long time people would say you know investing the stock market all this you know that's for wall street right that's for the bankers that's not for me investing is for everybody investing is how people get rich how you become a part of that area there's a lot of different ways to invest investing doesn't just mean the stock market you can invest money back into your business you can invest money into yourself by buying yourself courses you can invest money in a number of ways to rebuild what you're trying to accomplish. However, what you can't do is just sit on that money under your bed, like you were saying, and just leave it there to sit and expect that you don't deserve wealth. You don't deserve to be rich because that's for someone else. That's just not the mindset. And that is number 10, money is meant to be spent. It's true, money should be spent, but how are you going to spend it? What are you gonna spend it on? The biggest thing that I always preach to people as you start to make more money and I was actually listening to Magic Johnson in person the other day, and he stressed this as well. You cannot let your lifestyle, it's called lifestyle creep is what they call it. You can't let your lifestyle creep up with how much money you're making. Some people make a bunch of money and all of a sudden they start spending a bunch of money. Where does that get you? Nowhere. You're going to net even, right? Unless you're reinvesting it back in your business. But if you're just going out on fancy dinners, cars, another house, right? That is not going to get you anywhere. So yes, money should be spent, but I like spending money on things like stocks, money market funds, business trips, personal investments into myself. Those are things that I like to spend money on. And that's what everything circles back to for me. Stock market news, you got any comments on these last few ones? I agree with the last one a lot. I definitely, one of the things that I like spending the most money on is my investments in stocks and stuff like that. I get enjoyment out of that. That's kind of my uh, online shopping now. Do I need to buy some more stuff for myself personally? Yes. I don't know if everyone can say that. I think a lot of them might need to say the opposite side of it, but Overall, I do agree, you know, money is meant to be spent, but spending on stuff that matters that actually kind of do a few. And the biggest thing there, I think, is kind of understanding money in, money out, having that spreadsheet or having whatever it is. Maybe there's a good app for you, whatever, just knowing what you're spending on so you can know that, hey, this is worth it. This is not, I think, could be a very good benefit. Perfect. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel that you're watching this on. If you want more great ideas and education around finance, go ahead and hit the subscribe and like buttons.